In a series of articles on television news stories recently, liberals have assaulted tea parties with labels such as racists, tea clanners, homophobes, and other insulting jibes. Some are even calling the tea parties monochromatic, meaning all white and too white. Timothy Johnson, the chairman of the Frederick Douglass Foundation, which is a group of black conservatives, returned fire on these accusations, stating, quote, I've been told I hate myself. I've been called an Uncle Tom. I've been told I'm a spook at the door. At a recent Tea Party Day, a young documentary filmmaker set out to find out if there were any minorities at these tea parties and what their impressions were of these insults and labors and labels. Uh, Chris Matthews says these tea parties are monochromatic. I like to call Chris Matthews on, out on that. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Um, uh, uh, again, if anyone wants to call someone an Uncle Tom, first read the book. Uncle Tom was a heroic figure. Uncle Tom stood up against the Democrat Simon Legree, who wanted to enslave those people. He stood up and he fought and he was willing to die for freedom. So anyone who wants to call me or any other African American an Uncle Tom doesn't know what they're talking about because you don't know what an Uncle Tom is. You're a Sambo. You're a Quimbo. You're working for the Democrats. That's the party of slavery. And you you're continuing the enslavement of our people. Well, what Frank Rich needs to understand is that black and white people came together during the civil rights movement. The majority of those people out there were Republicans. Democrats have been following Democrats, black Americans have been following Democrats off of a cliff for the last 40 years. Amen. Joining me now is the young libertarian filmmaker who made the video that exploded in popularity recently. Nathan Stewart, Nathaniel, thank you for joining us and welcome to Freedom Watch. So what tea parties did you go to and what did you see when you interviewed those folks that we just observed? Well, that one tea party was just the tea party in D.C. that was in um, Freedom Plaza. I've been to plenty other tea parties, but um, those specific interviews were just from Freedom Plaza. Um, I've seen a vast variety of people at all the tea parties that I've attended. Um, so, you know, it's a, it's a different mix of people all over the place. Have you, have you seen any evidence whatsoever for the allegations that the Tea Party errs are racists, are homophobic, are all white, are too white, are secret clanners? Not at all. Um, I mean, I'm sure there is a fringe element, um, you know, because those things do tend to attach on, on both sides of the spectrum, but no one that I have ever talked to has, any, have, has ever said anything racist or homophobic or clannish. Well, what's your impression of, uh, of the Tea Partiers? I mean, what, what animates them? What, what motivates them? Why has this enormous group of middle Americans suddenly come together at this point in our history to demand that the government not cross a certain line? I just really feel that everyone there really thinks that they're losing their freedoms and uh, and, and liberty. You know, it's it's really uh, it's 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 a lot. It's a lot to do with uh, fiscal responsibility. I don't, I don't think that people think that America can be sustained at the rate that we're spending. And uh, I just you know, it really comes down to freedoms. People don't want to lose their freedoms. And the more the government takes power, the more freedoms go you know when you uh, interview folks at these tea parties uh, nathaniel whether it's the black folks that uh, just ripped into the chris matthews of, of this world or whether it's white folks or whatever their uh, their nationality and, and race may be are any of them reluctant to talk to you um yeah actually there was uh, quite a few um hispanic people and asian people that turned down interviews with me because um you know some people just don't like to be interviewed, but um, there was definitely a, a different mix of people there. You know, it wasn't, uh, I didn't interview the only six black people there. I mean, there was uh, probably 12 to 15 interviews, and uh, that was just at one tea party that day. I, I've so. spoken at at least a half a dozen from uh, Fort Worth, Texas, where there were 25,000 people, to Columbus, Ohio, uh, where there were 10,000 uh, people. And it, nothing has impressed me that it was all one race or all one age uh, or all one uh, eth ethnic uh, group. To me, it was a, a sampling of America at its finest. The people basically saying enough is enough. 
The government has taken too much of our money, too much of our property, too much of our liberty, and we have the right to assemble and tell the government, this is a line which you will not cross. Have you seen anything different from that attitude, which I've just summarized for you, that I have learned at the tea parties that I've attended? Not, nothing even close. That's, that's exactly what I've seen, the same exact thing. Uh, where do you think the movement is going, Nathaniel? Do you think it splits the Republican Party, or do you think the Democrats should run for cover? I think that the Democrats should probably run for cover. I just think that um, I think that these people eventually are everyone in the Tea Parties are going to unite. You know, um, there are a couple of different groups going on right now, but I think that um, eventually, once you know November comes around and uh, elections are going again. Everyone's going to unite, and everything's going to be okay. <laughs> what what uh, inspires you to participate in, or or observe, or become part of the Tea Party movement? Um, well, actually, I didn't even uh, I didn't even vote in the last election. I wasn't even politically motivated, but I started, uh, you know, waking up to what was going on, and uh, it really motivated me to to get involved and kind of, uh, you know focus on things that I saw in the media that were a little bit ridiculous and uh, I feel like when you hear it from somebody that's not in the mainstream media that it's that it's a lot easier to believe number one and and to to take in you know I'll tell you what the next time you come back with clips like you've shared with us call us here and we'll run them again because the stuff you've shown us is dynamite and it defies what a lot of people in the media at networks other than this one have tried to say is the impression of the Tea Parties. Thanks for joining us on Freedom Watch. Thank you very much. You can catch today's show on foxnews.com slash Freedom Watch and on Sirius 145 XM 168 or online at foxnewstalk.com at 6 p.m. Eastern on Saturdays. From New York, defending freedom. Until the next time, stay free, America.